بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم Salar Khan here and today with the properties of the continuous time Fourier transform. Okay, we've seen the basic introduction, we have seen the book examples, we will see more examples as well in the upcoming videos. Today we see the properties. Fine. Now uh, I've also skipped the topic of periodic signals and uh, yes, so I will do this, I will do that after this. Uh, properties okay so the first property of Fourier transform so let's say I go in order of the book is linearity linearity that Fourier transform is a linear operation so what do what do this mean let me tell you that if x of t is a signal having Fourier transform x of j omega if you multiply it with something in the time domain it gets multiplied by that thing in the frequency domain which means what let's say I multiply this by an alpha times x of t this would get multiplied over here as well as an alpha times x of j omega let me let me write it as an x1 of t x1 of j omega x1 of t x1 of j omega fine so I am combining things if I have a signal let's say x2 of t it has a Fourier transform x2 of j omega if I multiply this by some scaling factor beta times x2 of t it gets multiplied in the frequency domain as well by the same factor beta times x2 of j omega what does the property of linearity says if x of t in the time domain is a linear combination of two or more signals in the frequency domain the Fourier transform is a linear combination of the individual Fourier transforms how is that so let's say I take in the time domain I take these two signals which means that my alpha times x1 of t is added to beta times x2 of t so this means that this is a linear combination of these two so this would imply that the Fourier transform is now a linear combination of the Fourier transforms of these two which means it would be alpha times x1 of j omega plus beta times x2 of j omega this is what the property is if alpha was not included it was simply x1 plus x2 then the Fourier transform would be linear combination of these two fine coming to the proof of it coming to the proof of it so let's say let's say I have a signal uh, well this is the property in black okay let's say I have a signal z of t which is equal to alpha times x1 of t plus beta times x2 of t so this would have the Fourier transform with this we need to prove so this would have the Fourier transform z of j omega which is equal to unknown so now what do we do we consider the the Fourier transform equation so my z of j omega in that case would be what would be the integration negative infinity to positive infinity z of t so z of t is basically this thing so I would have it over here alpha times x1 of t plus beta times x2 of t and this is whole multiplied to an exponential of negative j omega t integrated with respect to t now if I do what if I split the integration fine so what would I have I would have it like this z of j omega would be equal to negative infinity to positive infinity alpha times and alpha is a constant so I take it outside the integration then I have x1 of t and multiplied with exponential of negative j omega t and I'm splitting it so dt over here then you have a plus sign plus beta is a constant so beta is over here outside then you have the integration negative infinity to positive infinity you have an x2 of t it's multiplied with exponential of negative j omega t dt isn't it like this so have a look negative infinity to positive infinity x1 exponential multiply this isn't this the Fourier transform x1 of j omega negative infinity to infinity x2 exponential negative j isn't this the Fourier transform for x for the signal x2 x2 of j omega so so yes it is so I could write that my z of 
j omega basically is alpha times x1 of j omega plus beta times x2 of j omega and this is what i wanted to prove we are done with the first property the second what the book says it's a time shift property okay so the second i would write over here let's say is the time shifting property so what does this property says now again this property says if you have an x of t is any general signal having a fourier transform x of j omega now if you shift this signal by an by a t naught units let's say plus minus t naught you have to do what the fourier transform in the fourier transform what do we have multiplied with an exponential of plus minus j omega t naught exponential of plus minus j omega t naught t naught is the amount of shift x of j omega the original fourier transform gets multiplied with this factor coming to the proof coming to the proof now again you know that uh, x of j omega is equal to this thing right so the fourier transform equation implies what that now x of j omega is the new x of j omega is let's say x dash of j omega right so this would be equal to negative infinity to positive infinity right and now my x of t is basically let's say i'm considering the plus t naught case so i have an x of t plus t naught right and and you would have an exponential of uh, negative j omega t plus t naught right and 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 yes this is integration with respect to t and let me check if it is yes so it is no 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 over here i would not be replacing it over here i would not be replacing it right yes because this is the independent variable t so now what do i have let's say i replace this t plus t naught by a variable tau okay so let's say that this t plus t naught is equal to some variable tau fine such that if now you have a dt as well so which means if you integrate it so dt would be equal to d tau why because t naught is a constant so the derivative of a constant would be zero fine so and the limits of integration would again be the same because if t is negative infinity tau would be negative infinity is positive infinity tau would be positive infinity so my x of j omega i would write over here now my x uh, my x dash of j omega x dash of j omega would be negative infinity to positive infinity x of x of tau right x of tau and then i have an exponential of so it would be a negative j omega uh, uh, so let me write it negative j omega in place of t you would have a tau minus t naught tau minus t naught isn't it like this fine now if i split it so an exponential of j negative j omega tau and multiplied with an exponential of j omega t naught and isn't it like this it is fine uh, and what is the next term remaining it's dt so dt was replaced with a d tau fine now have a look have a look the integration is with respect to tau can i not take the t naught term outside wouldn't this be a constant it would be if it's not a constant although depending on the variable omega but with respect to the integration it is a constant so i would take this outside exponential of j omega t naught i have the integration negative infinity to positive infinity i have x of tau exponential of negative j omega tau with respect to tau look at this term isn't this the fourier transform of x of tau tau was an independent variable isn't this with respect to t the integration isn't this the original fourier transform it is so does this not imply that my x dash of j omega is exponential of j omega t naught multiplied with the original fourier transform of x of t that is x of j omega that's the proof 
have a look I, I took it for for a plus T naught and you know a plus T naught means a right shift right a plus T naught means a left shift plus T naught means a left shift so I took it for a left shift now now it's a homer for you to take it for the right shift you take a minus T naught and you would get over here is a minus J omega T naught and that is it that's for the second property fine the third going in order of the book is conjugate and conjugate symmetry so the third is conjugate okay so let's say again if I have uh, or let me write it with the black pen if I have a signal x of t as always the Fourier transform is x of j omega if I take the conjugate of x of t which means if now I have x conjugate of t the Fourier transform would now be the conjugate of the original Fourier transform and also independent variable reversed x dash x conjugate of a negative j omega of course we have to prove it again consider the Fourier transform equation in what's Fourier transform equation and if I have the conjugate if I talk about the conjugate so x conjugate of t would be what it would be a 1 upon 2 pi and and it would be a negative infinity to positive infinity so what do you have x of j omega exponential of negative j omega t and this is with respect to tau and isn't it like this it, uh, it is with respect to omega right now if you see if you see so in the original uh, if you compare it to the original signal if I need this x of j omega to be the Fourier transform of this x uh, conjugate of t and let me also replace this by a conjugate so if, if this x conjugate of j omega has to be the Fourier transform of x of j omega so over here I need to have a positive j omega t whereas over here I have a negative j omega t so if I replace the omega by a negative omega it would not have any effect why because the integration is from a negative infinity to positive so replacing that would only do what replacing the independent variable sign would only you know uh, uh, reverse the order of integration and that does not matter so what do I have is I replace omega by a negative omega and this would imply that x conjugate of t would be equal to 1 upon 2 pi the integration is from negative infinity to positive infinity x conjugate of negative j omega x conjugate of negative j omega and then you have an exponential of positive j omega t and this is with respect to omega now isn't this fulfilling that criteria it is x conjugate of negative j omega basically is the Fourier transform of what of the x conjugate t signal 1 over 2 pi exponential j omega t d omega d this is correct so this means what that this this x conjugate of t has the Fourier transform x conjugate of negative j omega and is that clear till here it is it is okay so yes we have to discuss some uh, points over here and I believe I, own, I missed one point in the time shifting property the time shifting only affects the phase right it's somewhere over there time shifting only affects the phase of Fourier transform and why is that how is that because oh, look the the new Fourier transform is only being multiplied with this particular thing and this particular thing has the magnitude exponential j omega t naught the magnitude of this is equal to 1 isn't this right this 
it is so which means what that the magnitude of the new Fourier transform the time shifted version x dash of j omega is equal to the magnitude of x of j omega and this thing only changes the phase the multiplication of this thing only changes the phase of the new Fourier transform right now now I have what if uh, if this is a real signal if x of t is a real signal so what would be the case if x of t is a real signal so this implies what that x conjugate of t is equal to x of t right x conjugate of t is equal to x of t and, and you know what else it is so so if the this is equal to this so which means your corresponding Fourier transform would also be equal and this is someone teasing me so I don't know you know not teasing me but okay so the call was on the wrong time and this implies what that my x of uh, the, the corresponding Fourier transform would be equal x of j omega would be equal to x conjugate of negative j omega this is case number one and this particular case this oh the light is gone the light is gone okay so let me continue this video when I connect when the power comes okay so I'm sorry for the disturbance okay so let's continue our discussion now uh, we were here if I uh, if, if if x of t is a real signal so which means that x conjugate of t would be equal to the x of t so if the signals are equal in the time domain this would imply that their frequency domain counterpart is also equal and this property is called that, that if, if this condition exists this means that our signal is conjugate symmetric although we've seen these definitions in the Fourier series but no problem anyways so this call signal is conjugate symmetric now you know very well that we can uh, express the signal that is x of j omega in in this representation the magnitude of x of j omega and the phase of x of j omega in this is the polar form this is the polar form or if we consider the rectangular form the rectangular so in that case what do we have we could either have you know x of j omega would consist of the real part of x of j omega and the imaginary part of x of j omega now for this condition to hold for this condition that x of j omega is equal to the conjugate this means that the magnitude of both are the same this means that magnitude of both are the same which means that x of j omega is equal to the magnitude of x conjugate of minus j omega and the phase are my at, at, at what minus uh, so which means that the magnitude is an even component even function and the phase is an odd component the phase is equal to minus now of the phase of x conjugate of minus j omega fine this is in the polar form similarly in the in the in the rectangular form what do you have the real of the original x of j omega is equal to the real of the x conjugate of negative j omega but the imaginary is an odd function which means it's equal to minus of the imaginary of x conjugate of minus j omega and what is this let it go let it go so now what do you have this is done okay let's say we have two more conditions if x of t is real and even if x of t is real and even this implies what that x conjugate would x of j omega is real and even fine and you can now prove this for yourself and similarly another condition is that if x of t is real and odd if x of t is real and odd this implies that x of j omega is imaginary and odd and you can do this by yourself you can do this check this out by yourself 
This is about the third property that is the conjugate property. Discussing the fourth property, I remove the board first. All right. So what is the fourth property? The fourth is in order of the book is where is it? It's differentiation and integration. But let me do the the time scaling first because integration takes time then. So I would do the time scaling first. The fourth is time scaling. Now again if you have a signal x of t its corresponding Fourier transform is x of j omega. Now if you time scale this by a factor x of a t x of a t will now have a corresponding Fourier transform equal to 1 upon the magnitude of a absolute of a and 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 what x of j omega by a this is what this property is and so let's let's prove it let's prove it so uh, now uh, what do we have let's say i name this as an x con x dash of j omega x dash of j omega and this would be equal to what from this equation you have a negative infinity to positive infinity x of t is now x of a t and this is now multiplied by exponential of negative j omega t integration with respect to t isn't it like this let's say i introduce a variable that is this a t so let a t is equal to some variable tau which means that d t would be equal to d tau right uh, no 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 wait uh, d t would be equal to d tau by a dt would be equal to d tau upon a and over here if i replace t so t would be equal to tau upon a right we know we th this t would be equal to tau upon a so we do all the putting in this equation so i would have now x dash of j omega this would equal negative infinity to positive x of tau you have an exponential of negative j and you have a t by a right you have a tau by a for t so let me write the a with omega and i have a tau so tau by a right and then you have a d or let me you know write it in the in the same step you don't confuse it omega and then you have a tau by a and then for dt you have a d tau by a fine now this a is constant so i can take it outside which means you have a one upon a fine and then you have what you have an integration negative infinity to positive x of tau uh, and then you have an exponential of negative j and let's say i write an omega by a times tau the integration with respect to tau so have a look is it not fulfilling the condition x dash of j omega is the Fourier transform of the signal x of tau but at frequency not omega at frequency omega by a and 1 over a is taken outside now this 1 over a is taken outside because we considered a to be positive if a is negative this would be a negative 1 over a so, so to generalize it for positive to be positive for negative to be negative we took the absolute over here and this is all about the proof omega by a this is the Fourier transform for which omega is equal to omega by a and that is it for this property if you have a time reversal if you have time reversal So time reversal is again a special case of this. So when uh, when a is equal to a is equal to minus one, right? So when a is equal to minus one, this means that if a signal you have x of 
minus of t it would have the Fourier transform what 1 upon negative 1 is what it's uh, the negative ones uh, absolute would be 1 so you have a 1 and you have an x of negative j omega and we don't have to prove this because this is the only the case for this thing so the light is gone again the weather is quite windy outside and I believe that's why it's going again and again so let's continue this discussion again when the light comes okay so welcome back now you know this has been a major drawback uh, in uh, what the online system here in Pakistan some students were opposing it you know the electricity you know uh, we don't in many areas they do not the time when does it go when does it come so it was a major drawback during this uh, lockdown the online system anyways over here we do not have a problem it only goes for two hours the whole day but right now it's uh, the, it's quite windy outside so maybe that's the reason they are cutting the power or maybe I don't know whatever but due to the wind it is anyways I will finish this video and then I will get a break if the light can go as many times as it wants anyways coming to the sixth property now the time shifting I discussed but I forgot to discuss the frequency shift with it so anyways we have a frequency shift now if you have an x of t and x of t has the Fourier transform of x of j omega if we talk of the frequency shift if you shift uh, let me write over here that if you shift the Fourier transform x of j omega by some units omega naught so your signal x of t gets multiplied by a factor exponential of j omega naught t j omega naught t and why have i left the space over there to to show you the plus and the minus sign if the frequency is shifted by some unit plus left or right that you know if it's shifted by plus units over here you multiply it by a negative sign and similarly if it is shifted over here by a negative units you multiply it over here by a positive sign and this is what the frequency shift property is let's say i have an x dash of j omega so how do we prove it how do we prove it so the x let's say we have an x dash of j omega right let's say the new this new is equal to some x dash of j omega so my x dash of j omega is what this would be equal to uh, negative infinity to positive infinity and my x of d is now this x dash of t let's say so 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 let's say i i write it as x dash of t so this is now an exponential of and let's say i'm taking a plus j omega t and multiply with an x of t and it has to be further multiplied with an exponential of negative j omega t integration is with respect to t now uh, you can see you can see that uh, the same exponentials so you can take a negative infinity to positive infinity x of t exponential of uh, uh, you can say is a j j and then you have omega minus omega naught into t and the integration is with respect to t so have a look if you compare if you compare so the comparing implies what that this is the Fourier transform x dash omega x dash omega of j is the Fourier transform of x dash of t but at which frequency at frequency equal to omega minus omega naught which means that this is the shifted version of the original Fourier transform comparing implies what that omega is replaced by omega minus omega naught so which means that x dash of t has x dash of t has Fourier transform as what as this thing 
x dash of t which is equal to the exponential of j omega naught t multiplied x t this has the Fourier transform x of j omega minus omega naught now the next case you can do yourself if you consider over here a negative sign so over here you would have a positive sign x of j omega plus omega naught that is it for the frequency shift property what is the next property let's say we see the duality property number seventh is the duality property and let me write it first so the duality property says what if x of t has the Fourier transform let's say if I omit omega for simplicity x of t we know this is the function of omega and the Fourier transform we know this is a function of omega x of t we know that it's a function of time over here it's a function of omega right now if we have such sort of a sing uh, such sort of a signal in the time domain which means if we have x of t in the time domain this would have a Fourier transform uh, such that such to this signal this signal in the frequency domain small x of omega we've already seen it in example in the previous video but over here let's say we prove it this is an important property this is an important property your inverse Fourier transform says what consider the inverse Fourier transform relation x of d is equal to 1 upon 2 pi and you have the integration that is negative infinity to positive infinity x of j omega exponential of j omega t with respect to omega isn't it like this it is now what can I do is if I replace my t by a negative t so what would I have replace t by minus of t so now what do I have I would have an x of minus t why am I doing this why am I doing this because I want to rearrange this x of t to get something as x of j omega this is my my, my only objective you can see that these two relations are quite similar to each other you have x of j omega x of t that's one function that's that's anything 1 over 2 pi is just a multiplication factor you have an integration the limits are the same you have a function you have an exponential function so these are quite similar to each other so what do you have I want to represent this x of t some sort of relative to the x of j omega so I have replaced in the first step t by a minus of t so now what do you have and also let me multiply this 2 pi on both sides so this step would imply that I have a 2 pi x of negative t right and then I have this would be equal to x of weight and the integration is negative infinity to positive you have an x of j omega and then what would you have exponential of negative j omega t d omega this is the first step the second step is to in this step we replace now we now we replace uh, omega uh, t by omega because over there I have omega I wanted to get that sort of representation so I, repre I replace t by omega and I replace omega by t fine because over here have a look I wanted this sort of a relation so here we have omega so over here I will make omega over here I have a t so over here I will make a t so I replace omega by t and t by omega so now what do I have I, I, I finally write it over here that I have is 2 pi uh, where is it yes 2 pi x of negative omega and this would equal what the integration negative infinity to positive infinity x of t and an exponential of negative j so over here omega by t t by omega so again the same thing omega t the integration with respect to t so this is something that i have got now if you have a look if you have a look i have a time domain signal x of t and i have a frequency domain signal x of negative omega negative positive does not matter of course 
we know the significance but it is a frequency domain signal so can you not say that this is your signal this is your signal of which you are talking and this x of omega isn't this the Fourier transform well, how can we say this? We are just simply stating it on the basis that T is representing our time domain signal. The mathematical formula is as that is. We just have a multiplication factor. That does not matter at all. And we have an omega a function with respect to omega. We know this is the frequency domain system. That is the Fourier transform. This is the proof. This is the proof of this particular property. A very important property the proof is a little confusing but let me tell you now in simple words in very simple words we we saw an example in the previous video we saw an example in the previous video and what was that example just the last step before the video gets boring I will finish it over here this was a time domain signal given to us was X of D a rectangular a, a, a gate pulse or, or whatever you call it we saw the magnitude to be 1 over here we saw this right in the previous video this was the time domain signal how was the frequency domain Fourier transform of this signal wasn't this equal to this sync function it was equal to the sync function over there I also named the duality property now what does this duality property say so let me you know give it a double arrow over here uh, well this does not of course does not mean about the 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 what the Fourier transform let me name let me give it a simple arrow and let me give it a name of duality or a double sided arrow so the duality property implies what the duality property says that if you have this sort of a signal in the time domain which means if I have a sync function in the time domain and let me represent it by a capital X of T this time so let me you know for the Azana break or, or just a bit so now if you have this sort of a signal in the time domain I represented it by a capital X of T what do you have it if you have a sync function in the in the time domain the duality property says what you know it better than me the duality property says the Fourier transform of this signal in the frequency domain let's say I represent it by a small X of Omega would be some sort of this signal why some sort because this would be a time reversed signal this is an even function if I time reverse it it would still be the same function like this but with the magnitude change you have to multiply a 2 pi with it as well I, and over here I missed a negative sign yes yes over here I missed a negative sign the 2 pi was just a multiplication factor so over here you have to multiply a 2 pi with it the, the amplitude over here was 1 the amplitude over here would be would be 2 pi that is it duality property the most important property the 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 what the the proof is a little confusing just just a little confusing you see it two three times you see the study the book you'll understand it the basic thing is what you have some sort of a signal in the time domain you have its frequency to Fourier transform if you have that sort of a signal in the time domain the frequency domain would be the exact opposite now it would be the time reversed version of the time domain signal originally and multiplied with some multiplication factor that is it for this video I finish it over here this had got quite long and you know the light disturbed us through three times so this is getting a little boring we continue with the next property in the next video see you very soon till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye